Welcome to this video on setting up the ORCID plugin in Open Journal Systems. I'm Kate Shuttleworth with the Public Knowledge Project. The Public Knowledge Project, or PKP, is a research and open source software development initiative developing software for scholarly publishing. PKP develops open journal systems, open preprint systems, and open monograph press. We are committed to improving the quality, reach, and diversity of scholarly publishing. This video is for OJS administrators at ORCID member institutions, such as academic librarians, who are interested in enabling the ORCID plugin in OJS so that authors can connect their ORCID profile with their published research. This video will cover the following. We'll start with an introduction to ORCID and the ORCID plugin for OJS. Next, we'll look at the steps for applying for ORCID member API credentials. Finally, we'll cover the steps for enabling and setting up the ORCID plugin in OJS and inviting authors to connect their ORCID profile with their published work in a journal. Please note that this video will focus on open journal systems and how to set up and use the plugin in OJS. The plugin is also available in PKP's open preprint systems, and it works in much the same way as what you will see in this video. The video also discusses the member API, which is available to ORCID member organizations. Journals from non-member organizations are invited to use the public API, which functions in a similar way. For more information, please visit the ORCID plugin guide in the PKP documentation. ORCID stands for Open Researcher and Contributor Identifier. It provides researchers with a persistent digital identifier, an ORCID ID, that they own and control, and that distinguishes them from every other researcher. Researchers can connect their ID with their professional information, affiliations, grants, publications, peer review, and more. They can use their ID to share their information with other systems, ensuring they get recognition for all their contributions, saving time and hassle, and reducing the risk of errors. For more information about ORCID, please visit orchid.org and watch the introductory ORCID video. Now that we know a bit about ORCID, let's look at the functionality of the ORCID plugin in OJS. The plugin allows journals to send an invitation to authors asking them to connect the ORCID record to their submission in OJS. From there, the plugin collects and authenticates the author's ORCID account by asking them to log in to an existing account or create a new ORCID account through the links provided. Once the author has connected their ORCID record with their article and published the article in an issue, their ORCID ID will display on the published article page with a link to their full ORCID record. Finally, thanks to the member API, the published article details will automatically be added to the author or contributor's ORCID record page, so they don't need to log into ORCID and add the article details themselves. There's a few ways that journals will benefit if they choose to implement the ORCID plugin with the member API. Journals can support their authors by giving them an easy way to connect their published research to their ORCID record. This gives authors a reliable collection of all their published work, which will remain accurate and consistent, regardless of changes in role, institution, or a change to their first or last name. In addition to supporting authors, integrating ORCID in your journals demonstrates a commitment to transparency and credibility by accurately attributing authors to their published works and authenticating articles through a trusted resource. This helps to demonstrate the legitimacy of a journal by allowing readers to check that published work actually belongs to that author, while easily verifying an author's complete CV and collection of other published works. In addition, ORCID implementation supports metadata collection and validation in services such as Crossref. Now that we know a bit about ORCID, the OJS plugin, and the benefits for journals, we'll go over the steps for registering for the member API and setting up the plugin in individual journals. The first step is to check to see that your institution is an ORCID member organization. You can visit orchid.org members to see a full list of organizational members. You may need to connect with the ORCID contact at your institution since they will need to confirm with ORCID that they would like to use one of your organization's member API credentials for your OJS journals. If your institution is not a member but would like to be, you can visit the Learn More About Membership page on the ORCID website to request membership. 
The next two steps will help you to prepare to complete the application form for the member API. When you complete the form, you'll be asked to include the name of your client application. This will appear as the publication source next to the article information on an author's ORCID record. So how do you select a client application name? If you are setting up the plugin for multiple journals, you can use a broad name that encompasses all of the journals, such as Open Journal Systems at Simon Fraser University. If you are setting up the plugin for only one journal, use the name of that journal. When you complete the member API application form, you will also be asked to include redirect URIs for the journals that will be using the plugin. It's a good idea to consider now which journals will be using the plugin so that you are prepared to complete the form. You have two options for listing redirect URIs. You can register all of the journals URIs separately, or you can register just the host name for a collection of URIs. Let's look at those two options in more detail. If you choose to register all of the journal's URIs fully, you'll list the URI for every journal that will be using your institution's member API and setting up the ORCID plugin. So if you're a library publisher hosting the Journal of Science, the Journal of Art, and the Journal of Sports, you'll list each of these URIs in the application form. The second option is to register a host name that is the root URI for all other journals that will use the plugin under your membership. So for example, if all of your institution's journals have a URI beginning with journals.universityxyz, registering that base URI will allow the plugin to work for all other examples listed here, journals.universityxyz slash journal of science, journal of art, and journal of sports. Let's look at another example. In OJS, sometimes journals are collected together under a single install, and they may share a base URI. For example, the SFU journals are hosted on a shared install under the URI journals.lib.sfu.ca. If you look at the URIs for these individual journals, you can see that they all begin with the same base URI, followed by the journal's name or initials at the end. If I want all of these journals on this shared install to have the ORCID plugin enabled with the member API key, I can register just the base URI instead of listing the URI for each journal in the install. When you're ready, you can visit the ORCID website to register your client application for the member API. As of February 2021, the ORCID profile plugin for OJS is certified, which means you can implement the plugin directly in your journals without going through the setup in the test environment first. However, if you would prefer to test the implementation before you get your member credentials, you can request Sandbox credentials from ORCID by going to Resources, Register a Sandbox API client, and completing the form for Sandbox credentials. You can then test these credentials in your OJS site before you get your production credentials. When you're ready to get your production credentials and set up the ORCID plugin in your OJS journals, you can go to register a production API client. Let's take a look at how to complete the form. You'll include the name of your organization, some contact details, and the name of your client application. This was the piece we discussed earlier, which will appear as the publication source on an author's ORCID record. You can also include the base URI for your application, a short description of your client application. Here we've said journals hosted in Open Journal Systems at Simon Fraser University. And then you'll include your journal redirect URIs. These were the URIs we discussed earlier. You can include the individual URI for each journal or the base URI if it applies to several journals that will be using the plugin. There are spots for five URIs, but you can include extras under the notes for ORCID staff if you have more than five. You can leave any additional notes for ORCID staff if you have more information that you'd like to share about your application. And then you can submit the form. Once you've submitted the form, you will receive a member API client ID and client secret via secure email. 
you will be able to use these API credentials to set up the plugin in all of the journals for which you provided a URI in your application. Once you have received the member API credentials from ORCID, the next step is to inform your journal editors so they can let you know when they are ready to add the ORCID plugin to their journal. When a journal lets you know they are ready to enable the ORCID plugin, you can do the following. First, check that the journal is using OJS version 3.1.2 or higher, and arrange to upgrade the journal as necessary. You can find information about the OJS version in the Administration tab under System Information in your OJS site. When you're ready to enable and set up the plugin, you can visit Settings, Website, Plugins, and check under the Installed Plugins. The ORCID Profile plugin should be located here under Generic Plugins. Start by selecting the box under Enabled for the ORCID Profile plugin. You should get a notification that the plugin has been enabled. Next, click the blue arrow next to the plugin name and click Settings. Above ORCID API, you can select Member. For client ID, you can paste the client ID you should have received from ORCID in an email, and then paste the client secret that you also received. You have the option here to select a box which will send an email to request ORCID authorization from authors when an article is accepted. So when the article is set to copy editing, the system will automatically send an email to the author requesting that they connect their ORCID to the submission. When this is done, click OK. Now that the journal has the plugin enabled on their site, the journal editors can invite authors to connect their ORCID profile to their submission in the journal. There's a few options for authors to connect their ORCID profile in OJS. But first, let's briefly look at the difference between authors and contributors. In OJS, an author is the person who logs in with their account and completes a submission. Once an author has connected their OJS account to ORCID, it should automatically connect their ORCID record to future submissions they author in the journal. Contributors in OJS are co-authors. Since they don't log in with their account to submit to OJS, they will need to be invited to connect their ORCID for each submission they make in the journal. The first option is for authors to create or connect their ORCID ID when they register with the journal. When a user visits the register page, they can click Create or Connect Your ORCID ID, which will open a pop-up box, allowing them to enter existing ORCID details, or click Register Now to create a new ORCID profile if they don't already have one. The second option is for authors to connect their ORCID through their public profile in the OJS dashboard. The user can log in and click their username in the top right of the dashboard. Then click View Profile, Public, then they'll see the option to create or connect your ORCID ID. And just as before, this will provide the pop-up option to either sign in or register. The third option is to send an email to authors inviting them to connect their ORCID profile to their submission in OJS. This can be done anytime a new contributor is added to a submission, either when a submission is created or when the submission details are edited in the Publication tab. You can also locate a contributor in the Publication tab and edit their details to send the invitation. Let's have a look at a submission that's currently in the copy editing stage. We can visit the Publication tab, click Contributors, and add a new contributor. As we fill in this contributor's details, we'll see the option to send an email to request ORCID authorization from this contributor. We can do the same with an existing contributor by clicking the blue arrow and clicking Edit, scrolling down and selecting the option to send the email to request ORCID authorization and clicking Save. Let's revisit what this will look like on a published article page. Here we see a journal that recently published a new issue. If we click on one of the articles, we can see the author information on the article record page, which includes their ORCID ID. If we click on their ORCID ID, 
we can see that same article has been entered into their ORCID record. And this was automatically completed through the member API when the article was published. Remember to check regularly for upgrades to the plugin in the installed plugins list. If you have issues or concerns, please post on the PKP community forum for help and support. For more information about ORCID and the ORCID plugin, please visit the ORCID website, the PKP ORCID plugin guide, and the PKP community forum.